turn your Bibles to the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. I'm not reading them, all of the verses, all of that text this morning. I'm a t I will tell you about the text in the sermon. But this week, I want you to study the gospel according to Luke, chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. Please study, read it. That could be a part of your devotional in the mornings or in the evenings. Because our sermon title for the day is The Perspectives from All Sides. The Perspectives from All Sides. Holy Spirit, fall fresh upon me. Let this sermon touch someone from the choir to the pews, to those watching, and even to your humble servant right now who is offering the message. Please forgive me for my sins and create in me a clean heart. I've already sinned since I've been at First Baptist, but I ask you, to clean me up and let this message be heard. Please, God, I'll give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. It is in your name we pray that I pray. Amen. As I said, this morning I will not read to you the entire text of Luke 15, 11 through 32, but will give you a synopsis before we delve into the full sermon, because you're doing this sermon with me. Nod your head, say, do something. But I encourage you again to read the story that Jesus told about the prodigal son in Luke 15, 11, and 13, and reflect upon who you would be in this story. Because this whole story, this whole text, is not just about the prodigal son, but is about the older son and the father. And this whole chapter of Luke 15 is about something being lost, a lost sheep, a lost coin, and our focus for today, some lost sons. Have you ever felt lost as a person and thought no one deemed you important to come and look for you? Maybe you were lost emotionally and you thought there was no one there to investigate what was wrong with you. This past week or so, we have heard of the young woman who was from North Carolina. It appeared that she had everything going for her. She was Miss North Carolina, and I believe she became Miss America. She was a trained attorney, lived on the 29th floor in New York. But she jumped off the apartment building in which she lived. Jesus is telling a story about things and people being lost and connecting it back to there's always the Almighty who is waiting for the lost and seeks us out. But there are always perspectives, that being one's viewpoint of something or a situation as it relates to something or someone being lost. Allow me to tell you the story. And if you still have your Bibles open, and I hope you did, you can follow to see if I'm on target. The story is about a prodigal son, his older brother, and the father of the two. In our Luke and text for today, we have three different perspectives 
There is the younger son identified as the prodigal son. The older son lets him, let's identify him as the do-gooder son. We have any do-gooders in here? And then there is the father who only wants the best for both of his sons. Let's call him the loving parent. The younger son's perspective is, I want to see the world and live while I am young and able. No one can tell me anything. No one knows what's best for me. Even you, Father, do you know anyone like that? Have you been like that? Okay, I'll be truthful. I was like that, but my sister... Rest her soul, she was the do-gooder. She was wonderful. It was me who my dad would go to my mother and say, that's your child. That's your child. And my mother's response would be, I know for a fact, she's yours too. I've been like the prodigal son. However, common sense, a willingness to ask the parent for forgiveness, and let us not leave out hunger that gripped the prodigal son. And Jesus includes in this story, that Jesus includes, being hungry or hungry for something can make a purpose, a person, Humble. The Holy Spirit must want me to put this, and I know we, we, we need to get out. But I was in college, and I was a double major. So I graduated from Xavier University of the South in music, therapy, in music, voice, and then Loyola University, music therapy. I told my mother, she and I had gotten to a fuss, and I told her, I'm a woman now. I'm 21 years old, have two degrees. My mama said, okay. I said, and then later on I said, mama, are you going to buy me new shoes for my two graduations? My mother said, no, you're the woman. You're the woman. Go and get your own two shoes, new pairs of shoes. I did buy you the, the, the new dresses. If I would have known you would have disrespected me like that, I would not have done that. I thought about it for a little while because I was hungry for new shoes. I went to my mom, not just because of the new shoes, but because I was so disrespectful to her. She said, are you a woman? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You're the woman in this house, mama. And yes, I was a woman of age, but my mother was still the matriarch of that house. I was hungry for something. This is no joke. After I told my mother that I was sorry, she said, go put your clothes on. We're going to Canal Street. Put some nice clothes on. Do you know that woman bought me five pairs of shoes? I only had two new dresses, but five pairs of shoes. I said, Mama, you're the woman, you're the matriarch, you're everything. I was like, I had the younger son's pers perspective. The older son's pers perspective is, I'm always listening to and doing what is right by my parent. And as a son, where has that gotten me? The faithful one. The one that listens. That was my sister. This obedient stuff is not all what it's cracked up to be. Have you ever thought about that? You're trying to do everything you believe is right by God but it's not getting you anywhere? Think about it. Be honest, reflect upon it. Maybe you have gotten older and it's becoming even harder to, ex to exist. Not just knees, but health issues, other health issues. Or you are younger and it's hard to survive 
in an, an economy that's becoming more and more expensive to live in. Or you are a kid and feel invisible to most people. Then finally, in the story, there's the perspective of the loving father, the parent. For me, he is truly the center focus in the story. Why? Because the parent's focus is centered around and upon love and grace. The parent loved both sons, and with that love offered free will and free choice. The text says the father divided everything equally. That's in verse 12. But the younger son left and the older son remained behind. It was free will and free choice for both of the sons. Three different perspectives. When we review all three sides, we can learn from the mistakes of both sons and learn about the importance of forgiveness and seeing forgiveness and love from that of a parent in action. The prodigal son bore the perspective of entitlement. You know anybody like that? They just feel like they're entitled. That's the prodigal son. The older son bore the perspective of having a pity party. You know anybody like that? Where are you in the story? And can you see God the creator as a forgiving parent, a fair parent? Is there something you should go to God to and ask for forgiveness? Should you offer that type of forgiveness and love to someone who has hurt you? Or should you offer that forgiveness and love to yourself? The text doesn't say that the older son listened to his father and went to the party for his prodigal brother who had come to his senses and returned home because he was hungry for something. But we can learn a lesson, that lesson being forgiveness is always paramount within any perspective. I'm preaching to myself now. Yes, this text is about not falling prey to comparison, agonizing about how it appears that God is doing more for some, but not for you. This text is about forgiveness. That being, being able to forgive self for doing wrong and be able to go and ask for forgiveness from those you have harmed. This text is about reconciliation. Did the prodigal son reconcile with his father? Yes. Did the older son reconcile with his father and brother? We can only hope so. The text doesn't say. Did the parent reconcile with both sons? Yes. He told both sons that he loved them, divided the stuff that he had attained, working hard for equally, but it was free will and free choice. Yes, because the parent was willing to accept the prodigal son back and tell the older son how important he was because of the obedience he had given to his father for years. This text is about unconditional love and about free will and free choice. I can't say that too often. So what is it that I hope you can learn from this text? I hope you learn it's good to have an honest talk with yourself about things. Before I went to my mother, I really wasn't thinking about the shoes, seriously. But I wanted to offer my mother, after I had a talk with myself and realized that I was wrong, I wanted to give to her the respect that she deserved because for 21 years, she had taken care of a child, put her through two, not one university, two universities. I didn't have to work. She and daddy took care of everything, and that's how I was going to disrespect her. It's good to have an honest talk with yourself about things. 
And when you have this talk, ask Jesus for direction and then be obedient to that direction. I was a stubborn child. And at first I didn't hear anything. But then I heard, say, I'm sorry. And then know that forgiveness and reconciliation are always possible in any given situation. It is possible, reconciliation, when true love, true love abounds. Stubbornness is not one of the fruit of the Spirit. Do you hear me? Being stubborn is not one of the fruit of the Spirit. Always do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Don't be stubborn and say, well, I can do whatever I want. No, you can't. Don't look for pats on the back. Just know that love of God and love of self propels us to do what is right in God's sight. And finally, accept grace when it's offered. Know that God loves you in spite of whatever you do, whatever I may do. God's ultimate perspective is one simply of love and forgiveness. Be willing to tell the Holy One, our heavenly parent that we accept the grace that's being offered when we confess our sins. Do you know when my mother was in the process of buying all those shoes, me, I said, Mama, I don't, I don't need all those shoes. Two pairs, it's good enough. One to match this dress and one to ma match that dress. <laughs> I wasn't no fool. And Mama said, no, because you have learned a lesson. I'm able to buy for you. I will buy all five pairs of shoes. Do you have anything against that? Who's the woman in the house? You are Mama. You are Mama. And I thank you for your blessing. You know why? Because it was grace. It was grace through that of my mother, and as the old hymn says, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. And this is my favorite. Through many dangers, toils and snares, I have already come. Tis grace had brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. Jesus gives more than just shoes. He gives love, reconciliation, salvation. What about you? The perspectives from all sides. What side do you want to be a part of? This day, this day. Amen? Amen.